Hello and welcome to today's DIY session. Have you ever wondered if painting glass objects is a thing? And if so, would the paint stick and would it even stand the test of time? Well, what if I told you, yes, you can. You can paint slick surfaces. I'm going to share with you everything that I know and love about prepping and painting glass. And not only glass, the same process will allow you to paint anything slick like tile, formica, glass, metal, plastic, and more. Trust me, I've painted all the slick surfaces and this technique is tried and true. If you are new here, hi, I'm Tracy. I show up here weekly to offer you DIY inspiration through home decor, thrift flips, and full-on furniture painting projects with a big focus on bold color and whimsical style. If this sounds like you, I'd love for you to give me a quick thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right here so that you don't miss a thing. All right, let's get started. Let's face it, if you're a thrift flipper, you are well aware that the glass aisle is always loaded with available objects. But glass is not always the finish that we are after. Not to mention, how about all the glass objects that you have in your home, items that we use every day that we end up just throwing away? I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of the plethora of glass items that you probably have at your fingertips and dress them up with paint to make stunning home decor. These right here, these apothecary jars are from Home Goods. I've had my eye on them for a while and I spent less than $30 on all three. Whereas a single small apothecary jar from McKenzie Childs is $155 and a set of three like that would be close to $500. I wanna use these candy jars year round and display candy in them based on the season. All you need to do to make your own painted glass decor is a quality primer that is formulated to adhere to very slick surfaces. Now I use Slick Stick by Dixie Bell and that is S-L-I-C-K stick not slip stick like so many people refer to it as. I use this product to prime my metal gumball machines like you see right here, and a few or a lot of my painted silver tea sets like you see right here, and even my kitchen tile backsplash right here. It's a game changer in the upcycling world. It is very easy to use, but there are just a few, few rules that I need to go over, and I wanna to talk to you about these right now. Now, you'll need to clean your slick surface first with a cleaner that removes oil and leaves no residue. Sometimes I use vinegar and warm water, white lightning, or even denatured alcohol. Dry your surface completely. Now, using a brush or a sponge, apply a single thin coat of slick stick to your surface. I prefer to apply with a stippling motion, especially on large flat surfaces. I usually brush on and then go back over with a stipple technique. I feel that the stipple creates tiny, what I call micro mountains, which increases the surface space for your future paint to adhere to. That's my theory anyway, and it's worked beautifully time and time again. The stippling will give you an eggshell egg finish, so if you don't care for that, you can just brush it on with smooth strokes. This first coat will need to dry at least eight hours, and this is very important, so do not rush this step. Return to your project after those eight hours and apply your second coat of slick stick and allow it to dry for at least two more hours. And that's it, your item is ready to paint. A few side notes, you rarely need to use slick stick on wood. I do recommend it over those factory baked on high shine finishes. My example is always Bombay and Company furniture pieces that I come across. It's very important to scuff sand those, just a light scuff sanding with a sanding sponge or fine grit sandpaper first, just enough to break that shiny finish seal prior to applying your slick stick. If you prefer to scuff sand your laminate or Formica prior to slick stick, you can. I never have and it still works beautifully anyway. Metal, glass, and tile obviously won't scuff, so there's no need to do that. I hope you have found this to be helpful and that it gives you the confidence that you need to move forward with all of your slick surface projects. If so, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up and the subscribe button, and I'll be back right here next week with more DIY inspiration. For those of you looking for a deeper dive into home decor and DIY processes, I would love to invite you to join my exclusive online creative group called Curiously Creative, where I show up via live video to guide you through every step of updating, upcycling, crafting, and creating the most on-trend home decor and gift-giving ideas. You can find that link right here and in the video description below. I'll see you next time.